From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Former special counsel John Durham testifies before Congress about his probe into the origins of the Russia collusion story from the 2016 campaign and gets hit from both sides. It's revealing about the state of our politics. Plus, Justice Samuel Alito defends himself in the Wall Street Journal against a slanted article in ProPublica, and the press corps attacks the justice rather than looking at the merits of his arguments. This is certainly revealing about the state of our press corps. We'll talk about both of those subjects. Welcome to all of you. I'm Paul Gigo with the Wall Street Journal editorial page here with Kim Strassel and Kyle Peterson. And let's start with the John Durham probe. He was testifying on Wednesday to the House Judiciary Committee. And unusually, he got hit from both sides. Let's listen as Democratic Congressman Stephen Cohen addresses him and his response. You have a good reputation. You had a good reputation. That's why the two Democrats supported you. But the longer you hold on to Mr. Barr and this report that Mr. Barr gave you as special counsel, your reputation will be damaged. As everybody's reputation who gets involved with Donald Trump is damaged, he's damaged goods. There's no good dealing with him because you will end up on the bottom of a pyre. I yield back the balance of my time. Witness can respond. Yeah, my uh, concern about my reputation is with uh, the people who I respect and my family and my Lord. And I'm perfectly comfortable with my reputation with them, sir. Kim uh, Durham kept his cool throughout the hearing, despite that ad hominem attack from Cohen, which just captures some of the tenor of the Democratic assault. The idea that Durham was somehow wrapped up with Donald Trump is, of course, false. Durham was looking at the uh, facts of the uh, 2016 probe, that uh, the uh, Russia collusion investigation, how it started after the Mueller probe really failed to do that. And that's why Barr appointed him. And he produced a report. And what angers the Democrats, I guess, is that he exposed the fact, along with the inspector general of the Justice Department's earlier report, Michael Horowitz's earlier report, that it had all been started by Hillary Clinton based on essentially false information, disinformation. Right. I mean, remember how much emphasis and attention Democrats put on these claims of Trump-Russia collusion. Remember the sort of breathless days leading up to the Mueller report's release because they were so convinced that he was going to have the goods. Instead, what comes out afterward is Mueller admits he can't find a shred of evidence that there was collusion. And then Durham comes along, along with Inspector General Michael Horowitz, and they expose that this was all one big political dirt trick from the Clinton campaign, cooking up a phony dossier, also having lawyers like Michael Sussman, who was a prominent Democratic lawyer, feeding other false claims to the FBI. He exposed the FBI's many failings, the fact that they lacked a predicate for opening this probe, that they ignored exculpatory evidence, that they applied to get surveillance warrants based on this discredited dossier, that they withheld information from the federal surveillance court judges who grant those warrants. And he also exposed Mueller's failure. Mueller had years to look at this. He could have laid a bunch of this detail out. He chose not to. He was a former FBI director. That report, I think some of us look at it as a little bit of a a whitewash and a cover-up of what really happened. And he laid it all out there. Democrats are very mad about this. And so their only recourse seems to be to attempt to besmirch his reputation, which is a little despicable given the history of John Durham and the fact that everyone agreed, even Democrats, when he was named to this probe, that he was a career prosecutor who played it straight Only now that he's come out with his conclusions, have they changed their mind? Yeah, it's a highly informative report. And if you take government seriously and if you're concerned about the failure, particularly of law enforcement agencies, which have enormous power and the FBI, enormous power for uh, secrecy and classification, you'd think you'd look at that if you're a Democrat or Republican and say, you know what, this is not good stuff. This is dangerous and risky for a democracy. We should do something about it. We should add that. Durham was not critical in his comments and his testimony about Robert Mueller. In fact, he praised Mueller. And he also was not critical of the FBI or the Justice Department, praised his colleagues there. And I think it goes to show you that Durham is fundamentally Kyle an institutionalist and basically spent his career in the Justice Department and tried to approach 
his investigation as uh, something that honored the best traditions of that agency and what the limits are on a prosecutor. And he was critical, I would also note, in places of Donald Trump and the people surrounding him. So he was asked in this hearing about that infamous email where Donald Trump Jr. was offered, you know, evidence from an alleged source that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. And he replied, if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. And obviously that is not good. But as Durham went on to say, you have to take in mind that this meeting then happened and there was nothing that came of it. It was kind of a con job by the people who were sending the email, apparently, trying to get in a meeting to talk about something totally unrelated. And so it doesn't exonerate that what Donald Trump Jr. did there or anybody else surrounding President Trump as he went into this 2016 campaign. But I do think that he has tried to play it down the middle, you know, explaining what he found in this lengthy report, which I agree includes new details, new information that we didn't have previously, and then bringing the cases that he felt like there was clear malfeasance by government officials and not trying going on some prosecutorial attack in every direction that some Republicans apparently think he should have. And so I find these hearings sometimes bothersome in that for some members of these committees, it's a show for the C-SPAN cameras. Speaking of the show, let's listen to Republican Matt Gates of Florida go after John Durham from the right. It just seems so facially obvious that it's not what's in your report that's telling it's the omission. It's the lack of work you did. And for the people like the chairman who put trust in you, I think you let them down. I think you let the country down. And you are one of the barriers to the true accountability that we need. Do I get to respond to that or comment on that? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've ever investigated a crime. Um, if you I don't know that you have. Did, you didn't investigate these, Mr. Yeah. Durham. Witness can respond, and then we'll move on to our last uh, last. I don't know, sir, whether or not you've ever had occasion to uh, try to investigate crimes under the rules and regulations and not under the Constitution that we're bound by. Um, we can gather evidence in particularly lawful ways. Um, can't charge people because we might think it's something. It's not just that we you didn't charge, charge people. you didn't investigate. Matt Gates and all his charms, not letting Durham really answer Kim. And uh, another spot he compared Durham to the Washington Generals. That's the basketball team that was set up to perennially lose to the Harlem Globetrotters as if prosecution is a game. I think this tells us a lot about where our politics is right now, where we have members of both parties, they think the prosecutorial power is basically just an extension of political campaigns. You use it not to enforce justice or to find actual violators of the law, but you use it to attack and to prosecute your political opponents. And if by some, if you happen to be a prosecutor who decides, well, in my discretion, I'm not going to bring a charge, maybe because you don't think you could win in court, maybe because you don't think the evidence is there, maybe because you think it would not serve the interests of justice. You are called a sellout by one side or the other. It's a really despicable position, place to be for our politics. Yeah, it's very demoralizing. I would say, though, that at least the Matt Gateses of the Republican Party are unique in their headline seeking. Most of the Republicans that were at that hearing did try to simply elicit more information out of Mr. Durham about the findings. But, you know, Gates just couldn't help himself because he wants to follow this line that you just mentioned. To give you an example, he went on in that rant to query why Durham had not invested a portion of his investigation following up claims that Mueller's attorneys had acted improperly. And Durham rightly noted that that really wasn't the scope of what he'd been asked to look at, not to go back and, you know, throw former Mueller prosecutors into jail. But that's the only thing that's going to satisfy guys like Matt Gates because of the reasons you said. They want to see folks going to jail in orange jumpsuits. And I think one of the really important lessons that comes out of Durham's report and why I really liked it and all the work he did is a couple of things. One, is that he made clear both through his prosecutions and his reports that behavior by government officials can often be immoral and unethical and despicable and yet not be a crime. 
not be something that you put people in jail for. And I think one of the things that is so frustrating to a lot of folks and why you get to this attitude is because of our broader culture. I think it's frustrating to people that Jim Comey can be the former FBI director, can have been exposed to him really done a poor job and to taken some very bad decisions. In fact, to have done some scheming, it looks like. And yet to be greeted with a book contract and fed it on television, et cetera. You know, it used to be that when you were official and you misbehaved, you were shunned no longer. And so I think that's what causes people to then want to see everybody put in jail for things. But that was the important lesson from Durham is that he exposed what was wrong. We can make our choices, at least we now know. But I don't know how we get back to this point of people understanding that that doesn't necessarily mean we need to be filling our jails with officials who didn't serve us well in government. And I think, Kyle, Democrats who are attacking John Durham, and of course, they also, as Mr. Cohen said, attacking Bill Barr as somehow synonymous with politicized justice are making a huge mistake because both Durham and Barr. I think represent the classic tradition of just department officials. It's not to say they're not politically, uh, that Barr in particular, he's a political appointee appointed by a elected president. But the way he behaved was not in any partisan fashion. And when it came to prosecutions, not a political fashion. I sincerely believe that just watching him time and time again. And yet the Democrats treat him no different than Matt Gaetz. What I think that they're going to come to regret is if you get the next Republican president, and if it happens to be Donald Trump, I can guarantee you that the attorney general is not going to be another Bill Barr, but it might be the Republican equivalent of Jim Comey or Patrick Fitzgerald or somebody who thinks that the prosecutorial power should be wielded against your political enemies. To the point about Barr, I agree. He has now notably become one of the most outspoken people in the Republican Party who is saying that these charges against President Trump on classified document retention are not phony and not made up, and he had no right to have those documents. And so there's an example of where he is bucking what his party and his partisan interest you would think would be. And I agree with you. I think that this game of black hats and white hats, good guys and bad guys that often gets played in these hearings feeds cynicism of the voters who start to see it as all just a political game with no principle and no real actual neutral process at stake. And I think there are still those things at stake. And you want people to come into these roles and take these jobs and take their oaths of office seriously. And when they do, then their calls, that the calls that they make, the reports that they put out, criticize them on the merits. But don't do this whole thing of, you know, your reputation is going to be ash under the pyre of this report. (laughs) 